Before the 360, there were computers in business, but they were all different types. They didn't talk to one another. So trying to do business running on the computers was a little bit like trying to harness chaos. With the 360, that all changed. I'm Tom Watson, Jr. of the IBM company, and I want to welcome you to Poughkeepsie. We've asked you to be here to share with us the most important product announcement that this corporation has ever made in its history. The experience of the last two decades has been studied and analyzed. Now we're making a fresh start, combining the lessons of the past with the new concepts and developments of the present. Not before today has anybody offered a single data processing system capable of answering virtually every need of any user in any industry. With the 360 came a new architecture. Programs written on a smaller computer would work on a bigger computer. If you needed that computer, as your company grew, you could add computers and not lose that investment. The division has, as you now know, developed solid logic technology that represents a substantial step forward in performance, cost, automated design, and testing. We found that with the introduction of the 360 that it was the first line of uh, computers that had a real console on it. It was the first time where you had an opportunity to manage what was going on in the machine. We were able to process information exponentially faster. I think the industry knew that IBM was making a bet the company gamble, but I, basically I think they really just expected a bigger, better computer. No one expected a computer that would change the face of business. The first intention was to automate the billing system. It was very helpful in that time because we can collect the money faster than before. Back then, the calculation of interest for ordinary accounts at a bank was done manually by Abacus. So it was common for those people doing the calculations to stay at work until very late every day. I understand that employing this system allowed those people to go home earlier, so they were very happy. You know, the 360 and the mainframe didn't just revolutionize the IT industry. With the 360, the modern software era was born. You, you, you didn't have packaged software before the 360. Uh, computers enabled NASA to land a man on the moon in 1969. Uh, the modern financial services industry was built around the mainframe. And even today's airline reservation systems have antecedents going all the way back to the 1960s. We've done a lot of things based on 360 technology. Some of the programs we originally created back in 65 are still running today. The IBM mainframe system has been very helpful in supporting our banking business. The banking system has had to support rapidly increasing volumes of data for the past 30 years, as well as the customer's expectations of reliability. The role of mainframe systems has been substantial, so it has accomplished its goal, and we very much appreciate it. mainframe is here to stay. It's a technology we, we all grew up with and we know, we're comfortable with. If I look at all the different technologies out there and what we can achieve and what we have achieved on the mainframe, it's the most reliable technology that we have today. So I think the next 40 years of IT will be incredible. We see the siege in that, what's happening today. Uh, the whole growth of e-business, the promise of on-demand computing, ultimately utility computing, we're just beginning to see where the future might take us. And of course, you know, what's going to be anchoring all that will be the mainframe.